Alleluia, Christ is risen. The Lord is risen indeed. Alleluia. Christ is Gospel of our Lord Jesus Christ according to John. Early on the first day of the week, while it was still dark, Mary Magdalene came to the tomb and saw that the stone had been removed from the tomb. So she ran and went to Simon Peter and the other disciple, the one whom Jesus loved, and said to them, They have taken the Lord out of the tomb and we do not know where they have laid him. Then Peter and the other disciple set out and went toward the tomb. The two were running together, but the other disciple outran Peter and reached the tomb first. He bent down to look in and saw the linen wrappings lying there, but he did not go in. Then Simon Peter came following him and went into the tomb. He saw the linen wrappings lying there and the cloth that had been on Jesus' head, not lying with the linen wrappings, but rolled up in a place by itself. Then the other disciple, who reached the tomb first, also went in, and he saw and believed, for as yet they did not understand the scripture that he must rise from the dead. Then the disciples returned to their homes. But Mary stood weeping outside the tomb. As she wept, she bent over to look into the tomb, and she saw two angels in white sitting where the body of Jesus had been lying, one at the head and the other at the feet. They said to her, Woman, why are you weeping? She said to them, They have taken away my Lord and I do not know where they have laid him. When she had said this, she turned around and saw Jesus standing there, but she did not know that it was Jesus. Jesus said to her, Woman, why are you weeping? Whom are you looking for? Supposing him to be the gardener, she said to him, Sir, if you have carried him away, tell me where you have laid him and I will take him away. Jesus said to her, Mary. She turned and said to him in Hebrew, Rabuni, which means teacher. Jesus said to her, do not hold on to me because I have not yet ascended to the Father, but go to my brothers and say to them, I am ascending to my Father and your Father, to my God and your God. Mary Magdalene went and announced to the disciples, I have seen the Lord. And she told them that he had said these things to her. The Gospel of the Lord. This winter tested all of us. Well, almost all. There were a few fortunate souls from this part of the world who waited out the season in Florida. And Jesus loves them very much. (laughs) The rest of us had to get by with our resolve, our ingenuity, our strong spirits. But then for many of us, those things started to wear out and break down. And all we had left was hope. Even those who suffered the worst despair, could at least cling to a calendar and know for certain 
that warmer weather would come. The snow would slip away. We would see the sun again, even when there were no visible signs of hope in the world around us. And our hope gave us enough courage to persevere and find grace. I even went sledding for the first time in years. The passion and death of Jesus left no hope for his followers and friends. We know this because they acted like people without hope. They got scared, ran away, and hid. The death of Jesus hit them like a ton of snow but with no promise of a thaw. Nothing he had said, none of their memories of him counted for anything while he lay dead in the tomb. There had been other teachers, leaders, and heroes, and more would come and go. Some of them claimed to have special relationships with God. Some were even known as miracle workers all had their followers for a time, but now their names are known only to historians of the ancient Near East. And if Jesus had stayed dead, he would have joined them in obscurity. Mary Magdalene loved Jesus so much that, like a driver defying a winter emergency travel ban, she boldly went to the tomb of Jesus, walking through the city that had been clamoring for his death just two days before. All she hoped to find there was a dead man. Instead, she met the living God. The empty tomb alone with its neatly folded grave clothes would have been enough evidence to give some people hope that death had not gotten the final word. Encountering angels and hearing their message would convince most people of the fact. But Jesus wants more for us than just for us to believe in his resurrection. Jesus wants to meet us in his resurrection and make us like him. Just as he always had, Jesus wants an active, living, transformational relationship with us, not our passive assent to a body of doctrine. That doesn't mean the correct doctrine is unimportant. Jesus' followers and even his enemies called him teacher, so I should make that clear. John's Gospel in particular, which had emphasized Jesus' divinity so thoroughly, now goes out of its way to emphasize Jesus' tangible, physical, bodily resurrection. And we know that all the apostles, even though they argued about everything else, even though proclaiming it brought them scorn, ostracism, and martyrdom, they all stood firm, proclaiming the same message that Jesus rose again in the flesh. They all stood firm, their fear transformed into courage by their encounters with the risen Christ. When God deems us ready, we too will be raised, not as ephemeral spirits, but as whole people who live and relate the only way we can, in the flesh. Flesh was good enough for God to take on in the first place, precious enough that its death could break the bonds of sin, overthrow death, and liberate the captives of hell. If Jesus had not returned in the flesh, it would mean that a part of him was still dead, that his victory was incomplete, and that death still got a say in the ways of God. The God I know was not about to let that happen. 
Jesus' risen body defies our old expectations and defeats our old fears by being incorruptible, no longer subject to the limitations of the world, no longer vulnerable, but ready for eternity. So too will we be. And so even now, with our mere foretaste of the kingdom of God, our lives are renewed by hope, which gives us courage. Living in the Christian hope means living with the same boldness that Mary Magdalene and all the eyewitnesses to the resurrection lived with. Jesus told her not to cling to him, not because he had stopped loving her, but because he was calling her to carry out a mission of proclamation, to tell their mutual friends what had happened and what would happen next. The fact that Jesus asked Mary to tell the guys and not the other way around shows us that as much as he loved them, Jesus knew who he needed to count on to get the job done. The guys might well have gotten into an argument over who saw Jesus first. And the story of Peter and John racing to the tomb suggests that's exactly what happened. But Mary Magdalene understood what was really important, proclaiming, I have seen the Lord. Do celebrate today, for God has done so much that is worthy of celebration but also participate in the relationship that Jesus urgently invites us into with his resurrection. Expect to find him in unexpected places, both inside and outside, both in clamor and in stillness. Greet him with joy and thanksgiving for his almighty grace, and proclaim his resurrection both with your lips and with your lives, as a people reborn in hope. For we who have set our hope on Christ no longer need to fear anything, for our ancient enemies have been vanquished. We have seen the Lord. He is alive, he is risen, and he dwells in us, and we in him. Christ is risen, and you, O death, are annihilated. Christ is risen, and the evil ones are cast down. Christ is risen and the angels rejoice. Christ is risen and life is liberated. Christ is risen and the tomb is emptied of its dead. For Christ, having been risen, having risen from the dead, has become the first fruits of those who have fallen asleep. To him be glory and power forever and ever. Amen.